Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the 2008 IHSA Boys Basketball Tournament Pairing Show. I'm Bob Lovell, the host of Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk, alongside Pat McKee from the Indianapolis Star. Pat, the 98th annual IHSA Boys State Basketball Tournament. We're obviously at the uh, Sima State round for the girls uh, after this regionals yesterday, and now tonight people will find out who will be playing whom. 398 schools participating, largest number since 1979, and this is one of those truly great nights, one of those exciting nights, because literally hey, how the tournament will unfold for you depends upon how things go here in Indianapolis and putting the pairings together. It's definitely a great night, a lot of fun for the players, coaches, fans to, to figure it out and start mapping out uh, where they think their team might go through the tournament. And we look at the defending champions from a year ago. We talk about this quite a lot, and I think rightfully so. It is difficult to uh, repeat as a champion, irrespective of the sport or irrespective of the level. Last year, the 4A champ is Chicago Central. Right now, they're currently number eight and in the uh, 4A poll. Plymouth, the uh, 3A champs, currently number seven. Northwestern, an interesting story. The 2A champs from a year ago bumped up to 3A. They're a very solid team, ranked number five in a 3A. And last year's single-A champion, uh, Oregon Davis, not ranked at this time. But, again, you look at those schools, East Chicago Central ranked in the top ten. Plymouth ranked in the top ten. Northwestern, irrespective of the fact that they're out of their level and bumped up a class, these are three teams that have, a, a, on paper, a great shot, a, a chance to come back to Conseco Fieldhouse and play for a consecutive championship. Well, I kind of like what you noted in the uh, Northwestern case. They move up to 3A, so in effect we have two defending champions mm-hmm. in that class who potentially could meet uh, uh, in the northern half of the tournament. And then in 2A, it's, it's even more wide open because there is no defending champion, yet a number of teams that feel like they could could emerge. We encourage everyone to come out throughout the night uh, and watch the proceedings and find out who you'll be playing in. This is such a process. What's interesting about the process, Pat, is that the IHSA staff, Blake Rest, the commissioner, and the IHSA staff here literally walk in with 64 boxes filled with ping pong balls, and on each ball is the name of the school. And uh, you talk about a blind draw, a random draw, or however you want to refer to it. Clearly, that's what this situation is. They're doing it as we speak. When you and I go on the air, we will have had maybe a half hour to take a look at 1 and 2A, uh, the pairings for that. As we speak, they're in the process of, of doing the 3 and 4A pairings right now. And uh, I think it's fascinating to watch the, the process involved with those ping pong balls popping up through the air. You pick them out. And, and talk about a blind draw. This really is, I think, the quintessential example of what a blind draw is. Well, I mean, you and I have talked about this before, but it, it's certainly true. If anyone doubts the validity of the fairness of this, all they need to do is be here because yeah. it's being pulled right in front of your eyes. To, to their credit, they've got it done in a, in a way that they've done it so many times that they can pull it out. They've got cards for each team. They could get it all printed out and available pretty darn quickly. Uh, it, it's very amazing, the, the whole process, but it's as fair as fair can be. Tecumseh uh, right now going after their ninth consecutive sectional. That's the most uh, in, in terms of uh, championship streaks. Lafayette Central Catholic looks for its sixth consecutive. Fort Wayne Blackhawk, Christian Lawrence North, Muncie Central, and Orleans going for their fifth. Valparaiso looking for its fourth. I- again, that I think underscores how difficult it is. You have 64 sectionals and only have that few number of schools trying to repeat and go for some type of string in terms of sectional championships. Well, I think, you know, you've got the cycle of talent in schools, and as good as a given school may be year to year, it's very difficult to have that good of talent year after year after year. And there's an element of luck involved because all the teams are competitive. They all want to try to win. They're all doing the best they can do. So uh, to have a string, you know, two, three, four years or more, very, very uh, difficult to do. By way of explanation, as we go through the brackets tonight, there are five team tournaments. Those teams will, those schools will play one uh, game on Tuesday, first round game on Tuesday night, two semifinals on Friday night. Six team sectionals will have two first round games on Tuesday that begin at 6 p.m. and then two semifinals on Friday night. If the sectional is a seven team sectional, they'll play one first round game on Tuesday, beginning at seven o'clock. Two games on Wednesday, beginning at 6 o'clock. Two semifinals on Friday in the championship, obviously on Saturday. And we do have some 18 fields. They'll play two first-round games on Tuesday, beginning at 6. Two games on Wednesday, beginning at 6. Then the semifinals on Friday and the championship on Saturday. And, uh, Pat, we are minutes away from starting 1A North. And 
you know teams and coaches are sitting around either watching this on the website or listening to us on the HSA Methodist Sports Medicine Championship Radio Network. And clearly there's tension because you, we talk about this from time to time. It's great to be able to get into that Friday night bye, have to win two as opposed to three. And the other situation, and we'll see it, I'm sure, throughout the night are some ranked teams that square off against each other early. But now you're going to find out how the this week as you wrap up your regular season and you prepare for the championship all literally in the span of a few days. Well, there's no question that coaches will start thinking their, their practice plans to look ahead. What do they need to work on? Do they need to work on that press offense? Do they need one more inbound play? Uh, do they draw a team that pl- plays an unusual defense and they have to work against things mm-hmm. like that defense? Clearly, those will be parts of practice plans, not only next week in sectional week, but this week as they prepare for sectional week. Pat McKee from the Indianapolis Star and Bob Lovell. Coming up, we're going to begin the 1A North pairings. You're listening to the Indiana High School Boys Basketball Tournament Pairing Show on the IHSA Methodist Sports Medicine Championship Radio Network, brought to you in part by Methodist Sports Medicine, the official sports medicine provider of the IHSAA. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bob Lovell, and this is the 2008 IHSA Boys Basketball Tournament Pairing Show. We are ready now to bring you the 1A North matchups. These games will begin uh, February the 25th and obviously run through March the 1st. In sectional number 49, Couts is the host. There are five teams. On Tuesday night, number 11, Morgan Township will square off with Couts. Morgan Township lost to Couts 58-57 on February the 7th. On Friday night, game number one, Lacrosse taking on Washington Township, and then Whiting will play the winner of the Morgan Township Couts matchup. Sectional number 50 at Triton, six teams. Two games on Tuesday. Game number one, number one Triton taking on Westville, followed by South Central of Union Mills playing Argus on Friday night, the second game. 2007 champion Oregon Davis will play Marquette Catholic. Marquette Catholic beat Oregon Davis 60-42 to back on February the 15th. In sectional number 51, this at Hamilton, there are eight teams. Two games on Tuesday. Game number one, Lakewood Park Christian will play Hamilton, followed by Keystone taking on Fort Wayne Canterbury. On Wednesday night, two games, the first of which is the Howe Military Bethany Christian matchup. The second game of the night at sectional 51, number seven, Fort Wayne Blackhawk Christian takes on Elkhart Christian Academy. Winners will play in the semifinals on Friday night. At sectional number 52 at Tri County, there are six teams. Two games on Tuesday night, the first of which is number nine, South Newton, taking on Tri-County. Pioneer will play West Central in the second game. The winners will match up in the first game on Friday, followed by Caston and North White. In sectional number 53 at Tri-Central, there are five teams involved in this. On Tuesday night, Rossville plays Clinton Prairie. And then on Friday night, the game number one of the evening, Tri-Central plays Frontier followed by number 14, excuse me, number four, Lafayette Central Catholic and the Rossville-Clinton Prairie winner. Lafayette Central Catholic beat both Rossville and Clinton Prairie uh, earlier in the year. At sectional number 54, this at Southern Wells, there are seven teams. On Tuesday night, Cowan will play Daleville. On Wednesday night, Southern Wells plays Whites in game number one, followed by Marion, Lakeview Christian, and West Dell. Friday night, Liberty Christian will play the winner of the Cowan-Daleville matchup in game number one. 